of this. So here it is. Okay, and in that case, uh, observing these uh, aspects uh, where the idea is to support uh, these uh, anal security analysts' uh, function, uh, because uh, exactly this is uh, a very important action. Uh, is, uh, to analyze uh, what is going on during an attack and eventually after an attack as well. Uh, well, this uh, uh, is where we were before uh, starting uh, our lab. I would like then uh, to uh, ask whether everybody is uh, ready. If yes, please give me a green mark. All right, uh, Niraj, uh, uh, ready? Yes, okay. Uh, everybody is uh, ready. If yes, please give me a green mark. Brandon, Edwin, Glenn, James. Uh, Joseph, uh, Nate, uh, Nira, Sashi, and Stefan. If yes, please give me a, a green mark. Yes, okay, okay. Um, for the next uh, 22, 23 minutes of presentations uh, and activities on this subject. Okay, that's right. So basically, uh, all right, let's then carry on and proceed with these uh, aspects uh, of this. Okay, fantastic. Uh, we'll then uh, carry on immediately and see the next uh, aspect uh, that is uh, exactly uh, to analyze uh, uh, these uh, priority and classifications of these SNORT rules. Uh, where uh, the classifications are simply categories uh, of rules, uh, exactly in order to allow us to better organize these uh, rules. Uh, denial of service, uh, generic ICMP events, uh, network Trojan uh, detected, etc. So we have these uh, aspects uh, here that can be very, very useful for us to have a better uh, management of these uh, 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 rules here. That's exactly what we can see in, in this uh, text version of the rule. Class type, uh, for instance, attempted user, uh, attempted user privilege gain. Uh, in this example, we have here. The example shows exactly a rule and its classification uh, that we can uh, see in this case. The classification gives the analyst uh, a context and information information about what the role that triggered the intrusion event was addressing and this is uh, something that is very interesting from this point of view. Uh, the priority uh, as well uh, because uh, uh, we can effectively have as the, the figure illustrates here uh, the priority uh, as determined by the Taos team uh, this uh, uh, team that creates exactly all of these uh, roles uh, and this uh, priority more specifically in column uh, allows uh, the intrusion event workflow uh, priority and classification something that we already saw before uh, here um, when I've presented to you the different uh, workflows, uh, workflows based on priority, uh, use exactly uh, these, uh, the priority defined uh, here. Uh, valid priorities are uh, high, medium, and low. Uh, by default, the priority of the rule uh, derives from the event classification from that rule. Uh, effectively. Uh, we can override the classification priority for a rule by adding the priority keyword to the rule and selecting a high, medium or low priority. Okay. Uh, but in fact, the rule has already a default uh, priority level that is defined here uh, by this Talos team. And that's it. We have these uh, aspects uh, defined in this one. This um, uh, workflow, as you may see, uh, effectively uh, associating the priority and the classification, uh, drilling out these events based on the priority and the classification, um, what I mentioned to you, and it shows exactly this. Uh, 
table uh, where we can see uh, this uh, organized priority as you may see and uh, this workflow lists events and respective classifications in order of event priority along with the count showing how many times uh, each event has occurred uh, and some additional information uh, this screenshot uh, is a little bit uh, truncated but effectively uh, we have comprehensive information about this uh, the impact flags uh, are here also interesting uh, because uh, we have uh, uh, several ranges uh, in terms of the impact uh, we may have uh, in terms of the threats uh, associated with uh, events uh, uh, we have uh, this uh, here organized uh, in a uh, numeric manner uh, the impact one is uh, impact that is a serious uh, impact effectively that's why uh, its color is red uh, effectively uh, they, they uh, effectively use uh, host profile data in order to determine if the affected host might be vulnerable to the attack uh, these impact flags and uh, they immediately indicate whether an event is potentially a real event or a a false positive. Well, uh, FMC uh, displays uh, impact level uh, in the table view of intrusion events. Uh, the impact flags are shown there. Uh, and for each event, the system adds an uh, impact level icon whose color indicates uh, the correlation between intrusion data, network discovery data, vulnerability information. We have basically an index uh, that is the mix that will indicate as uh, an impact in a general way. But, uh, these uh, impact levels uh, are described uh, in a more specific way, uh, where uh, the impact zero uh, is an event that is occurred outside the profile networks, uh, assuming our network was fully profiled. Uh, there should be no IP addresses on our network that falls uh, out uh, in our defined range. Well, uh, this event uh, is therefore an uh, event that may be considered suspicious, despite it uh, should be an uh, event that effectively occurred out of our network. The impact one uh, effectively is an uh, event that requires immediate action uh, because it's an uh, event that is uh, confirmed as a security uh, uh, event, uh, definitely uh, occurred uh, in our network, uh, in a mapped host, uh, definitely. And uh, impact two uh, is uh, an event that can be used for research because these events are uh, leaving our uh, net environment. Uh, it could be an indication that the host is compromised and is attacking external networks. So it's an uh, uh, outbound uh, attack, it's an outbound event, outbound flow event. Well, uh, the, uh, impact uh, uh, flag number three. Uh, it's uh, uh, event where either the source or the destination IP address of a host is within the defined range of our network. And there's uh, a current host profile of that host uh, that exists and is defined in the network discovery process, but a connection was not necessarily established with another host. So it's an event that effectively uh, does not configure, at this moment, does not configure a connection. Uh, we can keep it under eyes, uh, under investigation. Okay. The impact number four uh, is applied to certain intrusion events 
where either the source or the destination IP addresses of the host is also within our defined IP range of our network, but has not been detected before. So only the range, but not the IP address. So the IP address was not identified. We know that th that IP address is within our range, but that, that IP address effectively uh, was not registered. We have no host profile about it. Well, uh, that's uh, effectively an event that uh, is considered a minor event, effectively. But it may eventually uh, be as well an uh, event associated, a uh, machine that has just arrived and puff was just attacked uh, so the attack was faster than the time the machine had to be detected and profiled well we don't know uh, the fact is that uh, we have no profile for a machine that was effectively associated with a security event that is the uh, impact flag number four. Uh, uh, definitely, uh, the impact flag number one uh, is the most serious uh, uh, event uh, and respective impact flag associated. Definitely, this is what we have here. Well, uh, that's exactly the case. Uh, occurred outside the profiler networks, profiler host profiles uh, uh, are associated with external machines that are not uh, in our range of these discovered devices uh, and seen so no host profile associated uh, events uh, that have no connections uh, here we have uh, impact flag associated with this example as you may see uh, in this event by priority, we have this here. Uh, okay, um, we have uh, the impact flag number two. Uh, well, uh, in this case, uh, uh, this should be eventually uh, a case because the machine uh, is sending out traffic, is outbound connection. Okay, uh, here, uh, what we have here, uh, this is uh, the black arrow. So the black arrow is associated with the dropped traffic. Okay. And here we have this impact flag uh, number one, the red one here, where typically we have serious attacks. We have vulnerabilities that have been exploited. So indications of compromise are associated to hosts uh, associated with those events for sure for sure, effectively, uh, because uh, this uh, host definitely uh, has exactly this, the indication of compromise, uh, for sure. Since we have a flag type one, uh, we have a host that is vulnerable or and or compromised, uh, effectively. This is very serious, very, very serious. Effectively, uh, the idea is uh, to analyze these uh, concepts where uh, the idea is to support this uh, indication of compromises uh, here, that are uh, informations uh, that indicate exactly the traffic, uh, indicate that we have a host under control or under attack uh, of hackers. So this uh, IOC label uh, typically allow us uh, to have uh, information about these uh, hosts uh, where we have one or several uh, symptoms. The IOCs are serious symptoms uh, that have issues, uh, problems associated with these hosts. For instance, the CNC, Command and Control Connected. Basically, if our FTD devices detect traffic towards a CNC URL, basically, uh, they have uh, this uh, index uh, CNC connected. There's a serious symptom that this uh, host uh, is uh, being uh, controlled by a CNC URL. 
uh, a CNC site, or if you have effectively and uh, malware uh, uh, URL where it is uh, a con connection there. Basically, we have uh, malware downloads here or phishing or whatever. So uh, there are uh, serious uh, symptoms uh, when these events happen. Uh, we have tags because these indicates we have issues, symptoms associated with that. Okay, that's uh, exactly what we have uh, in this. These are the IOC's indications of compromise, typically what we have here in this case, IOC's. Right, and this appears in this host profile. Right, uh, we have then uh, these uh, analysis uh, tools, uh, just like those we can see uh, here. Uh, this uh, context analysis explorer, uh, where we can have graphical tools. Uh, to the context explorer displays uh, data on applications, uh, application statistics, connections, geolocation. Uh, uh, applications uh, uh, where we have uh, issues uh, associated with indications of compromise, uh, intrusion events, uh, uh, you can see uh, here, uh, traffic and intrusion events uh, related here. Uh, in this case, we have uh, this uh, traffic and this line uh, here, this uh, uh, brown line that is not very visible because the brown line is uh, basically a flat line as you may see but we have this uh, here that are the events uh, they could be uh, effectively related uh, okay uh, and uh, in this case um, right um, Okay, that's right, brother. Okay, um, yes, but we are about to finish. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, in this case, uh, the Context Explorer uh, shows to us uh, these uh, aspects where typically uh, we have here uh, these structures and uh, these. Yeah, sometimes they do Miriam and sometimes they do that. Uh, all right. Uh, is, oh, hi, Stefan. Yeah. May you please uh, mute your microphone, Stefan? Uh, I'll mute mm -hmm. your microphone. Okay. okay, just for a while. Uh, in that case, uh, we have here uh, this uh, context explorer uh, where we have these IOCs, uh, typically uh, where uh, we have uh, these uh, uh, graphic where we can uh, click on the different slices of the cheese. And in this case, uh, these will lead us to the machines uh, or the events associated with machines that contribute to these uh, cheese. Uh, and this is uh, very nice. Uh, these will show to us uh, these uh, different aspects uh, here. The dashboards um, are uh, other uh, aspects uh, where we can uh, use this uh, here. Uh, um, these uh, dashboards are updated in real time uh, uh, where we have uh, these uh, structures uh, here. Uh, uh, certain uh, roles uh, can effectively uh, manipulate these dashboards administrate uh, or maintenance use or security analysts there are different different roles uh, that can effectively uh, use and manipulate these dashboards as you may see uh, some are pre-built uh, pre dashboards you can add uh, other dashboards as well uh, we can effectively use these uh, we can uh, have uh, some widgets 
uh, just like custom uh, analysis widget that is, uh, for instance, a very, very customizable widget. You can uh, add uh, additional widgets uh, here with these add widgets. And, um, and this uh, is uh, very nice uh, because the dashboards uh, being uh, updated in real time uh, and likely the context explorer that is not uh, updated in real time. Uh, okay, we need to click uh, in order to have it updated. But these um, dashboards uh, widgets, uh, as you may see, are customizable uh, in real time, as you may see uh, here. And we add the widgets uh, in this manner. And uh, here, uh, as you may observe, uh, you can add uh, these sections. Uh, the dashboard has uh, one or more uh, tabs associated uh, with these uh, widgets. Uh, these widgets are grouped in uh, three categories, analysis and reporting miscellaneous and operations, uh, uh, operations uh, associated with the status and overall health of this uh, fire power system. We have this uh, analysis and reporting uh, associated with events collected and generated by the fire power and uh, this miscellaneous uh, basically associated with uh, these uh, uh, RSS feeds uh, typically associated with them. But we have uh, these uh, different uh, options uh, you can effectively observe and uh, this uh, reporting uh, here where you can effectively observe uh, these structures uh, and this, uh, we have uh, different options, uh, the security related uh, types of data uh, where we have uh, security uh, threats automated remediations, operating system uh, related uh, data, just like the operating systems uh, most compromised, uh, APP threats, the operations related we have, uh, for instance, new systems or new services or changes in network behavior, compliance, we have different uh, types just like PCI, uh, or uh, HIPAA, for instance, uh, uh, or we have, uh, uh, for instance, uh, uh, operating system users, uh, we have uh, user or group access, uh, apply, uh, um, we have application segmentation, we have hosts in violation uh, of the corporate policy, we have several types uh, of data that can be effectively reported uh, in this reporting uh, capabilities. Uh, you have the reports and reports templates uh, that can effectively be used in the uh, appropriated reporting uh, section. Uh, this can use it in an intuitive manner, as we see. Uh, you have uh, these options, uh, these reports uh, uh, can be uh, formatted in different files. Okay. And in this one, uh, we have uh, PDFs, CSV, or uh, HTML format, and uh, you can uh, here uh, customize them. Uh, what is the uh, type of uh, you wish, applications or whatever. So uh, the formats uh, in terms of cheese or tabular or uh, okay, you can uh, here uh, customize uh, the, the different aspects, uh, the results, uh, the top 10 or whatever. So we have uh, the different possibilities uh, exporting the report template uh, in a single configuration package file in order to use these uh, templates in another FMC. You can do that. You can uh, create those templates and then you can export those templates to another FMC. Okay, uh, that's something uh, that is possible uh, to be done. And effectively, uh, you have this uh, possibility uh, here. Well, uh, in terms of these uh, best practice uh, here, uh, we have eventually to take into uh, consideration uh, that we can effectively uh, support uh, a multitude uh, of options. 
Uh, and uh, the idea is uh, eventually uh, to consider uh, these uh, uh, art options, just like, for instance, the retention uh, times. So, uh, there are some retention rates uh, that can be very short. For instance, the connection uh, data uh, is uh, only uh, maintained for uh, five days maximum. Uh, after those five days, the FMCE is not capable of keeping this connection data because we have a huge amount of data associated with connections. So in order to not lose connection-related data, it is important to run reports every five days maximum. And that's it. Right, uh, so uh, that's it, uh, what uh, uh, we can have in terms of these aspects, uh, in terms of these reports, uh, uh, we can have uh, summary uh, dashboards uh, here uh, that we can effectively uh, observe uh, in these uh, reports here and uh, to uh, build uh, reports uh, using the templates that is uh, easy because we can create uh, reports from templates or uh, creating reports uh, uh, one by one uh, but if we have uh, already predefined uh, templates it is much easier uh, in this case uh, building uh, these reports uh, from the dashboards uh, is also possible because we can effectively uh, use uh, these uh, report design uh, in our dashboards. Uh, uh, we can uh, uh, use, uh, for instance, these uh, report design uh, here. And uh, uh, in this case, we can send the data directly to the reporting engine of our uh, FMC. Uh, and we can uh, easily uh, do that, clicking uh, and building our report uh, for uh, from this report designer. And uh, we have uh, more than 100 uh, preset reports already pre-built. Uh, so uh, we have uh, a large number of reports uh, ready to be used here. Plus uh, the report templates capabilities uh, that we can use in order to use these templates here. Right, dear delegates, uh, that's it. Uh, before uh, going to lunch break, uh, uh, that's what I would like to uh, present. After the lunch break, uh, we can see uh, other uh, aspects uh, related uh, with this uh, uh, presentation. Uh, right, uh, uh, just like walkthrough uh, uh, on uh, a given bridge, for instance, what to do in case of uh, attack, etc. So, but eventually, I would like to uh, them to suggest a uh, uh, lunch break, and after the lunch break, we'll uh, see these uh, aspects uh, associated with uh, attack response. Right? Okay, my dear delegates, uh, uh, from this point of view, uh, that's all. Um, I would like then to kindly ask. Uh, you whether my uh, explanation was uh, clear so far regarding these last procedures uh, associated with this uh, information. If yes, please uh, give me a green mark. Uh, if you need any additional clarification, please let me know, my dear friends. Uh, okay. From Edwin to Stefan. Okay, that's right. All right. Um, okay. Thank you very much, my dear friends. I wish you then a nice lunch to everybody. All right. That's good. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, Stefan, uh, sorry, I um, uh, unmute you uh, a couple of minutes ago. I will now uh, unmute you. So you can mute yourself, okay? Because, because if uh, I keep you, uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, muted by myself, you could not unmute. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. I'm sorry for that. So thank you. Uh, I wish you then a nice lunch to all of you. And within 45 minutes, we'll see again by 10 to 2. Okay, all right. Thank you very much.